Sylvia's mother says Sylvia is busy, too busy to come to the farm. And Sylvia's mother says Sylvia is trying to start a new life of her own. And Sylvia's mother says Sylvia is happy, so why don't you leave her alone? And the operator says 40 cents more for the next three minutes, please, Mrs. Avery. Just gotta talk to her. I'll only keep her a while. Yeah. Please, Mrs. Avery. Just gotta tell her goodbye. Sylvia's mother says, Sylvia's packing. She's gonna believe. Today. And Sylvia's mother says, Sylvia is marrying a fella down down distant way. And Sylvia's mother says, please don't say nothing to make her start crying and stay. And they up Parade says 40 cents more for the next three minutes. Please, Mrs. Avery, I just gotta talk to her. I'll only keep her a while. Yeah, please, Mrs. Avery, I just gotta tell her. mother says Sylvie is hurrying she's catching the nine o'clock train and Sylvie's mother says take your umbrella cause Sylvie it's starting to rain and Sylvie's mother says thank you for calling and sir, won't you call back again? And the operator says 40 cents more for the next three minutes. Please, Mrs. Avery, I've just got to talk to her. I'll only keep her a while. Yeah. Mrs. Avery, I just gotta tell her goodbye. Tell her goodbye. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Hello and welcome to a cup of conversation. My guest in the studio today is Hugh O'Neill and it's great to have Hugh back in the Bridak studios and what a great start to the show, a great track from a group that we'll be speaking about a lot on today's programme. There's a reason why Hugh has opened with Sylvia's mother from Dr Hook and uh, we'll find out more in this cup of conversation. Hugh, welcome back to BRTK, it's great to have you here. Great to be back. Yeah, nice to see How's you. How's life treating you since we last met? Happy? We did a show here in, I think, June time, and uh, I've been flattered, really. I've been gigging. I played 130 gigs this summer and flattered, <laughs> really. So uh, very busy, and I've been on tour in Europe, Germany, and 
Yeah, since I saw you last. Yes. All good. Yeah. I can't keep up with you. <laughs> you're here, you're there, you're everywhere, you're on the island, you're not on the island. But I know that you're a very, very busy man. But before we talk about the reason why you're here today, because there is a special reason why you're here, let's find out more about you. Now, obviously from the accent, you're originally from Ireland. Yes, of course. Where? County Armagh, Lurgan. Yeah. And, uh, but you know, you had a... You have a very um, interesting background because I know that you went to Turkey, didn't you? You lived in Turkey. I went to Turkey, Turkey ten years. years ago. Spent nine years there before I came here, and uh, I have to say, you know, I've been here since April, and this is home now. So this really? is really this is the future. Yeah, I've decided this is where the roots are now. So this is yeah. where Don't home know. is where the, your uh, hat is, or you know, where your heart is. So now it's, it's not, not in Texas. Uh, huh? <laughs> <laughs> not in Texas. Not in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go back. You're a great musician, and I know that you play gigs around the island here. Were you always in music? Is that what your career has that always been your career for all your life? Um, for the last yeah, 40 years, we've been playing in bands. 30 years professionally, full time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, the story about what today is, uh, I can I can tell that whole story later. How we got round to Doctor Hook and everything. Yeah. But musically. Uh, I was the only person in my family who played music and uh, didn't come naturally. I had to work very hard, you know. And I have a daughter who, who's got a fantastic ear. She hears something once back, she's got it, you know. Yeah. And I've been surrounded with a lot of people like, I've worked hard, I can do that now. But it took me many years of hard work to be able to get yeah. an ear, you know, tuned in like that. But yeah, I got there in the end. You are a very talented musician yourself, I know. And the last time you were here, we were talking about your music. And I know that you had a, a we even showed a, a video clip of yours that you were when you were entering or where you were, where you were nearly yeah. um, in the Eurovision Song Contest. The Irish Eurovision final, a uh, song I wrote in Turkish with Turkish musicians. Yeah. Ended up in the final in the Irish Eurovision in Dublin. We were all flown over for the TV. It was a great, yeah. it was a blast. And that was yeah. Song Kids, wasn't it? Song Kids, yeah. yeah. And uh, the people watching this from the island all know this song because I play it yeah. at the gigs. And, and we have it on that radio station as well. Fantastic uh, tune, really, really good. So you're here with the guitar and you said you got, there's no one in your family who no. was musically inclined. No. So how did you get into music? I mean, did you develop yourself when you were a youngster? Did you learn the guitar by yourself? Did you have lessons? Well, I'm going to go right back to, I was sent to boarding school when I was 11. Like my other brothers, I have uh, four brothers, three older. Um, my first brother did seven years of a, a sentence, I call it, you know, like jail, because <laughs> I didn't like boarding school, I hated it. He did seven years sentence, the next brother did six, the next brother did five, and I thought, I can't do this. So I was very lucky I got expelled when I was in my third year. <laughs> <laughs> so I escaped, but I think it was the fact that we were deprived, well, TV didn't matter, but I was deprived of music. And when I got out and heard music, it was, I think it, was, it, it touched me more than it touched other people because I hadn't heard music in years. So I, I, it's a love affair with music. Uh, I listened to the radio night and day for decades and uh, I kept record of the charts. Every Tuesday, Johnny Walker would come up with the charts and I wrote books and I have books and books of all the chart positions. I'm good in a pub quiz. Yeah. And uh, 1971, this song came out and I heard it. And it's, it's hard to be different, but this song, 1971, I heard this song and I said, wow, this is different, right? And I, I, wasn't, I couldn't play the guitar, but I had to sing this song and I learned it. And I went and bought this group's album and I learned all their songs, and I still couldn't play the guitar at this stage, but I could sing their songs. Yeah. So, uh, and the song was the song I just played, Doctor Hook. So I learned that song many years ago. I was 16, I think, in 1971. So uh, I learned the songs, and uh, I went on holidays in Ireland with a friend, and uh, we were going to a few bars. I went to this bar, and there was a guy sitting playing the guitar, and he was a friend of my friend that I was with. So uh, we were sitting down, and I said, I can sing a wee bit. So I sang a couple of Doctor Hook songs with him. And then we decided that we'd meet up when we go home. He's from my hometown. And we met up and we formed a little band. We played together for a couple of years, you know, teenage band. Yeah. And 30 years later, I'll kind of come to that later, we played in a Dr. Hook show uh, that we played all around Ireland in the theatres. The same guitar player, still friends. And he's going to be playing in this band as well, in the new band I'm going to be talking about. Yeah. So that's, that's how I got uh, into Dr. Hook at the start. Now, people in the, in the island and in Germany and all, they know me for Irish music, obviously, that's what I do, and I mix a little bit of 70s rock with Irish, and people all know me for this. This is a completely different story today. Yes, I am surprised about that, because when you uh, were last here, and we were talking about your music, and you were playing some traditional music as well, yeah. um, I would never have thought that you were, yeah. you know, not a tribute band, let's say, but yeah. really a big fan, you know, your music geared to Dr. Hook, 
because yeah. you know that's something completely different. And like you say, a lot of your followers here probably don't know that you uh, are Doctor Hook. No idea. Fan. And I, I, never mix, I never mix the two. Yeah. So one thing that strikes me in that story that you just told about you know you growing up in uh, in boarding school and being deprived of music, we all take music for granted, don't we? Yeah. Uh, Hugh, we, you know, we we put it on the radio or we've got um, CDs or whatever now. I mean, you know, we could always listen to music and for you to be starved of music, yeah. do you think that made you even more determined to be a part of the music world? It's a passion that came and has, has never left, still there. Yeah. I still feel it because I still, still learn, learning. I still love playing. Of course you learn <laughs> till, the, till the final day. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, about the Irish thing, Irish traditional is my, my first love, but yeah. definitely second love is, is this Dr. Hook and I, I, it's a different hat I'm wearing today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's why we have the hat on today. Yeah, I, I, but, do, I do a full image and I do the show, yeah. But what is it about Dr. Hook that um, is special for you? From, uh, I started singing them right from an early age. Everyone said, you sound exactly like Dennis Le Courier, in, uh, which is a big compliment. He's a great singer. I think yeah. he's absolutely brilliant. So it's a big compliment, anyone tell me. That. And then over the years, they kept saying, I only played at parties and, you know, wherever. I, I didn't do them on stage. But every time I played them, everyone said, it's amazing, you sound exactly like them. And the fact that I really love the band. I love their zany, wacky stuff as well. The, the, the people know them for their popular hits and, you know, you know, sexy eyes and... Uh, when you're in love so, with a beautiful woman. That's what their biggest hit, and Sylvia's woman, or Sylvia's mother. Yeah. But uh, their other stuff is some great stuff in there. I've got yeah. most of their albums. So yeah, I developed a love for them. And then, uh, yeah. They are very radio playable, very, very yeah. listenable, and very, very popular. So um, no wonder that you know, you're, you're a fan, and no wonder that you've actually got this, I mean, do you call it a tribute band, really? You're not, are you? I mean, or do you it's pretend a, to be like them? Well, or are it, you just singing their songs? Well, we, we do, um, when I did it last time, it was a full live show, and we all play the music, there's no backing tracks or anything like that. And I, I did a lot of research into it, and, uh, I call it an evening of Doctor Hook songs, yeah. and uh, yeah, it, it works very well. I enjoy performing the songs. So. They're not an easy band to to imitate, I don't think. I mean, when you think of other tribute bands, like let's say I don't know ABBA. I mean, people could just dress up as ABBA, and that's it. You're halfway there, aren't you, with yeah. uh, ABBA or you know the Beatles? I mean, we had a, a Beatles tribute band coming to Cyprus uh, yeah. not so long ago at the Amphitheatre in Guinea, right, yeah. which was a big success, and it's yeah. quite. Not easy, but you know, once you've got the outfits and once you've got the, the ambience, you can do it. But for Dr. Hook, it's not so easy to, to grab the imagination, I think. Yeah. And it's the music that stands out, isn't it? Well, it's their style. And they were so live, you know, uh, you can push a button and uh, ABBA and all the harmonies and people are just sat and dance. I'm not knocking yeah. them. Everyone yeah. does what they do, but you have to do Dr. Hook live because yeah. you have to get the, and, uh, we, we, we write our own scripts in between and we do all the zany stuff in between the, the tracks. And we really do a, a Dr. Hook night of fun. And their harmonies are, it's like the Eagles. The harmonies are not easy in Dr. Hook. They're quite difficult. They're right up there, right down there. And I've always made sure I've got that as well. But I can do the solo as well, like like this today. I'm doing yeah. the solo, yeah. You're by yourself here today. So you, yeah. it's all on you at the moment, yeah, Hugh. Yeah. Um, you play at different gigs around the island, don't you now? Mm. You're, you're, and you're obviously doing your own style, Irish, and you said yeah. a bit of 70s yeah, yeah. rock and stuff like that. Um, you've actually got a show lined up, and the reason why you're here today is because you're you used to, and now you're going to do it again. You're you're meeting up with your, an old friend of yours, and you're doing yeah. this theatre only for show. theatres. Yeah. Okay, tell us a bit about this now. How did this all happen? Um, when I first formed the, the proper band, which was uh, must be twenty years ago now, yeah, with a as I said, the guy I met in the bar, and then I got a, a good drummer in and a keyboard player, bass player and uh, got the show together. Did one pub gig, which was okay, but we'd booked ourselves for a few theatres, and as soon as we did the theatres, we knew uh, there's enough Doctor Hook fans to fill the theatres, and uh, it, it works in theatre. You, you need people's attention, and we keep their attention, because uh, it's, it's, we, we live their whole story on stage, really, yeah. So is it like a, a show, then, what yeah. you're saying? I mean, because in a theatre, it's a different thing, isn't it? I mean, yeah, it's yeah. not like being in a bar where you've got everyone milling around and it's, you know, stalls yeah. and people at the bar and people at, at tables. Yeah. A, a theatre show, everyone is, you know, sitting in their rows and looking at you and they're watching. It's you, yeah. you, you. And the people who buy a ticket for a Doctor Hook, whether it's the real uh, Dennis Le Curry or Ray Sawyer or our show, um, they're Doctor Hook fans. So they already love the songs. And then when you perform the songs like the way they remember, 
and then we change them a little bit and get all the audience participation in yeah. and it's a great night great atmosphere so yeah. you were performing these shows was it was that back in ireland we did all the theaters in ireland yeah in the, in, uh, in ireland yes. and i mean so you obviously you're saying dr hook back then you know, 20 years ago, whenever you started this, was very, very popular and full, you know, sell out um, shows? Well, there's... Most of the time? The two main characters, the two, the guy with the patch who wasn't really the lead singer, was more of a backing vocalist and did some of the album tracks. He's a good singer too. But the other guy, Dennis Le Courier, was the singer and he yeah. was the voice. But when they split, there was, you know, when bands split, there's always a problem. Yeah. Dennis didn't get the name, so he was singing the voice of Dr. Hook as Dennis Le Courier and he played in England and Ireland and Europe. Ray, sorry, most, mostly stayed in the States. And uh, he was playing solo when uh, I put my band together and we were playing lots of large gigs all around. He was doing solo. He's doing really, he's really, really good, you know? But um, it's unusual because I'm going solo this time, but I'm going to have a band sometimes. Now he's got a full band on the road, seven piece <laughs> band. And I know I'm doing what he was doing. <laughs> but uh, it works, yeah. But uh, I, have an, I have another story about uh, that as well. So do you want to do that now? Or? Yeah, tell us, this story is a really interesting story. Tell yeah, us a yeah. bit about what happened. Uh, yeah. Because you, back then, correct me if I'm wrong, you called yourself Dr. Hooked. Dr. Hooked with apostrophe D. But the, with the, the, the apostrophe D was a bit D. The D small. got smaller as the time went on. And uh, <laughs> we, we, we had wigs, we had the hats, we had the patch, we had everything. Yeah. We had all the, the accents. We, did, we were Dr. Hook. Yeah. People ended up believing we were Dr. Hook. <laughs> and I don't think that it worked out the years. We looked a wee bit younger than what we should have done, or a bit older maybe. But <laughs> <laughs> we were playing in uh, Donegal in Ireland, and we were this beautiful theatre, state of the art, and we sold out. Unknown to us, Ray Sawyer, who owned the name Dr. Hook, the guy with the patch, yeah. was playing in a hotel with only half a ticket sold down the street. So there was a bit of a follow up to that. Yeah. And I mean, did he get angry that you know you were there? His his manager, who's a lawyer, <laughs> a New York lawyer, contacted our agent, and uh, the agent basically told him, "Go away. I don't want to hear this." He contacted me and he told me, this is the way it's going to go. He said, we're not happy with the name of your group and uh, people think you are Dr. Hook. And uh, this is the way it's going to go. I'm going to sue you. I'm going to take 90% of your earnings for the last two years. I'm a lawyer. I can do this and I will do this. And I said, listen, I, I just, I just very honest to him. I said, listen, we're actually both on the same side. I'm a Dr. Hook fan and uh, I get your point totally. Give me 48 hours, and in 48 hours, I had changed all our advertising. Every theatre we were booked in changed our name to Sylvia's mother. And I'd, I, I've worked really hard, and even a new poster designed and up. And I showed him everything within 48 hours, and he came back to me and said, I've checked it all out. He says, you're a man of your word. You've done what you said. Um, you are obviously brilliant. Um, Send me a video, and uh, not everyone can pay 30 grand at rate ch charges, but I have offers from all over the world. I'll give you some work. <laughs> so <laughs> I turned that complete negative into a positive. Fantastic. Plus, yeah. At that time, I had plans to come to Turkey. Just, just when a door was opening for me, um, I had decided to come and live in Turkey. And as I say, in Turkish, kismet, <laughs> kismet, yes. and you came to Turkey, and then now here you are in all Cyprus know, via Turkey. And I'm going back to it again, so yeah. Before we hear you again, let's very quickly announce that you are now actually going to be doing this theatre show again yep. under the name of Sylvia's Mother. Sylvia's Mother. Not Dr. Hook. And it's a complete Dr. Hook night. Right. And, and that's going to be taking place where? Um, it's going to be mainly in England and I probably will venture to Denmark. I haven't marketed it yet, but... Uh, right. It Hopefully, will. and I've actually been speaking before we did this interview with uh, Hugh, well, we wanted him to do a show here in All Cyprus, so maybe in the near future, never know, sometime next year, uh, there might be a special Sylvia Mother, Sylvia's Mother Night, yes. Dr. Hooked evening yeah. for all you fans out there. So, yeah. um, in honour of this upcoming yes. show, we have a second track from uh, Dr. Yeah. Hook, and what are you going to be playing for us now? So... I played the Sylvia's Mother one, which everyone knows. And again, most people know this song, but not maybe from Dr. Hook, because they did it originally. And uh, this has been turned into sort of a country classic, but this is how it sounded uh, originally when Dr. Hook did. It's, uh, it's called The Queen of the Silver Dollar. And again, like all Dr. Hook songs, there's a story 
and there's so many sort of different meanings you can take out. It's a beautiful thing. You know, back when there was no videos, Dr. Hook's songs were like videos because he just pictured the whole story. This is just another one of their great stories. So, yeah. Fantastic. Give it a go. Give it a go. Okay. Never played this one before in public, so this is a first. <laughs> <laughs> Exclusive. Okay. <laughs> She's the queen of a silver dollar She rules a small kingdom And a scepter is a wine glass And a bottle is her throne Now the jesters, they flock around her And they fight to win her favors To see which one will take the queen of the silver dollar home. She arrives in all her splendor every night at nine o'clock in a chariot is a crosstown bus that stops right down the block. Now the old piano minstrel plays a song as she walks in. And the queen of a silver dollar, she's home again. Yeah, she's the queen of a silver dollar. She rules a smoky kingdom and a scepter a wine glass and a bar stool is her throne. Now the jesters, they flock around her and they fight to win her favors to see which one will take the queen of a silver dollar home. Gown is a satin dress that's stained and slightly torn. And her sparkling jewels are rhinestone, and her shoes are scuffed and worn. The many roads she's traveled, and the wondrous sight she's seen. I watch her, and I pray God save that queen. Yeah. She's the queen of the silver dollar. She rules a smoky kingdom. And a scepter is a wine glass. And a bar stool is her throne. Now the jesters, they flock around her. And they fight to win her favors. To see which one will take that queen of a silver dollar home. Silver dollar ain't as hardy as she seems. She was once an ordinary girl with ordinary dreams. Well, I found her and I won her and I brought her to this place. Yes, I'm the man who made a queen of a simple country girl. Yeah. She's the queen of the silver dollar. She rules a smoky kingdom. And a scepter is a wine glass. And a bar stool is her throne. Now the jesters, they flock around her. And they fight to win her favors. To see which one will take the queen of the silver dollar. She's the queen of the silver dollar 
She rules a small kingdom And a scepter is a wine glass And a bar stool is her throne Now the jesters, they flock around her And they fight to win her favors To see which one will take the queen of the silver dollar home. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you very much, Hugh. That was an amazing rendition of that song. Originally, you said from Dr. Dr. Hook. Hook. Yeah, yeah. But it does sound very country, but a very, very uh, beautiful song there. Emmy Lou Harris did a version of it years later, and then from that, every country band in the world discovered yeah. it, really. And but the yeah, original by Dr. Hook. That's the original, Hook. like, sort of a rocky, sort of... Yeah. Amazing. And I can imagine now, you know, you sitting there on stage with the audience in a theatre mm -hmm. and getting intimate. I mean, how does it compare when you're on stage in a theatre like that to where you are now performing in the, in the TRNC, where you're at a bar or a restaurant or whatever? I mean, which one do you prefer? What's it like um, being up there? Yeah. I, I've always got my show, even in bars, my show is, uh, I always want to play to people listening, obviously, if you're a musician. In a theatre, you can hear a pin drop and complete silence, so you've got their attention. You have to be right, you have to, be, you have to deliver the song. Yeah. Uh, but I put the same attention into and, and to detail uh, in my pub shows, you know, and uh, it works actually well for me because most of my pub gigs are like little concerts. So um, I enjoy my pub and it's good crack and good fun and I get everyone happy and all, but if I had um, a choice, it's theatre work. I would I love to do my other show in a the theatre, like, but this one I can sell out and I, and I really, because it's so different and it is very demanding, as you can see, I sort of put a bit into the singing here. Yes, <laughs> definitely. I mean, uh, I, could, I could feel the energy, I could feel the, you know, yeah. how, you know your concentration there as yeah. well. Very, very professional, so, very well yeah. delivered. And, and uh, uh, on a concert night now, I, I, I put a lot of effort and work into it. And, you know, concert nights are much shorter than, say, pub gigs. But uh, I think I probably work twice as hard. <laughs> probably, I'm, I'm sure you do. I can tell uh, from this just one, you know, tune now how much effort you're putting in, uh, Hugh. Well done. Coming to this show, why now at this time of your life, now that you're living in North Cyprus, how comes uh, you're back to doing this tribute, or not tribute, but you know, this you know, reviving, should we say, Sylvia's mother? Yeah. Um, just recently, I've decided. I, I've, I was just playing a few sessions, little parties, and uh, where I would maybe sing a few of these songs. And again, the same thing was happening. I was hearing this again. And uh, I'm going to be, I became a, a grandfather since I saw you last. Oh, so, congratulations. Uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> my, oh, of course, my, he'll be, well, he won't understand, but his mum will. Um, Finn, his name is, my grandson. And uh, his mum, Megan, and my son, Adam, they'll be watching this anyway. So, hello, grandson. Hello to them. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I'm going to be traveling back and forth, and uh, where uh, I, I make quite a, a good living here. I work very hard and make a quite a good living. Um, but when you go back to the UK and Ireland, unfortunately, the Turkish lira <laughs> isn't yeah, it worth a lot. Especially so at the moment with the exchange rates. I decided I was going to... Well, I do Germany anyway, which is very nice for me. I really enjoy... G German pubs are like concerts. You asked me about that earlier. Um, Germany's a great outlet for me. Uh, yeah. You can hear a pin drop in the pubs. Uh, they, they don't make any noise. They're so focused on music. Yeah. Wow. So when I go back to Ireland, yeah, um, I decided I'm going to do a few gigs in Ireland and England. So I thought, well, I'm going to do my pub show, of course. But I was thinking, well, why don't I revive this again? Because uh, I never did it in England. And uh, I know Denmark. I've played in Denmark and Sweden and different countries with my other show. So I know the market there. So I thought, I'm going to... Variety is spice of life. And... Uh, yeah, I'm going to do it. And as a musician, I want to play with uh, a drummer guy. Uh, he's going to play with me, and we get on really well on stage, off stage. So he's going to be my partner in this as well. And really for the fun, and uh, yes. You're a one-man show here, you know, you're by yourself. Is it easy to go from being a solo artist here to working with the band again? Because, you know, as you said before, you know, um, bands and, and splitting up, and sometimes it's not a very happy split. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people obviously in going different directions. Yeah. Now you're going back, I mean, do you like working with other people as well? Do you like to have that gig with other totally, guys? Yeah, because you bounce off, you know, the other yeah. players. And, uh, and all the musicians, I was very fortunate the last 20 years of my band, Inchiquin, 
I just was blessed with really good musicians who I got on so well with. And I, when I go back to Ireland, I meet up and play in sessions and all with them. Very lucky. Some of them even come out to see me in Turkey and here and we play together. So, yeah. uh, and playing with other musicians, like uh, in Girna, uh, I was playing with two of the guys out of Blue Tears. I was playing with them, who are well-known rock band guys. I'm a rock singer, mm -hmm. so uh, I got playing with them recently. I'll probably follow that up again. And uh, oh, musicians bounce off each other. Yeah, and it's great. And but the solo thing is a real challenge, and uh, the harmonic is something I've been working on in the last few years. Just and uh, I have to do it all now. I don't use backing tracks, as you know, so I play everything live. So yeah. again, I work very hard, but I, I enjoy the challenge, and uh, I'm an old workaholic. You work well under pressure, I think. You're very I good under pressure. Enjoy pressure, yeah. Um, I just don't really feel pressure, so I suppose, yeah. I sort of thrive, if you call this pressure, you know. <laughs> Before you do leave the island to go on your, on your tour of the UK and Ireland and everything, uh, where are you at the moment? Where can people see you here in the TRNC? Um, I've cut down the work in the winter. It's much quieter, although there's a lot of people still around and they yeah. want to be entertained. And I'm just playing a couple of my regular gigs over. Uh, like today, I'm rushing from the studio to play a gig in Essen Tepe and I'm playing there on New Year's Eve, which is nice. Little, small, intimate gig. It's good. Uh, and I still do Whiskey Joes with the people who first brought me to the island. Mm -hmm. So Tracy and John, I look after them. And I play the fly-in and uh, where else? In the winter, I didn't want to be busy, but uh, I'm a wee bit busier than I anticipated. Yeah. But uh, the, the summer, some of those gigs are closed now. And there, there's a brand new gig opening up in uh, our village soon. So I'm going to be playing there. I'm going to do the opening night for that gig. That's coming up in January. When you say our village, where are you uh, well, based uh, at the moment? Between, uh, I'm between Ozenkoy and Chatalkoy. This one's actually Chatalkoy. Right. Um, it's coming up in January. So something to look forward to in January. I'm opening this. And this is a really trendy, uh, not trendy, I don't like trendy, but it's a really cool bar. Oh. Opening in Chatalkoy. I'm not going to advertise, but I'm just saying, okay, watch, watch this space. In the <laughs> middle of January, a cool bar, I'm going to be opening it that night. So. And when do you go off on this tour then with you know, your new venture for um, Ireland and England? Well, f first of all, at the end of uh, February, beginning of March, I'm doing Germany again for a few weeks. I'll have my whole show. I have my show solo to do, but I, I want to get the, the whole Sylvia's Mother Band on. Um, from April on, I'm going to be doing a few gigs. Yeah. And um, then back here for the summer? Back Hopefully. here for the summer, not just as committed as to the gigs. I, I'm not going to play six a week because like, at my age I have, yeah. to, I have to take it a little bit easier. <laughs> That's a lot. But I'm going to do the gigs I enjoy. And, but no, this is still going to be home. I'm coming and going, maybe a wee bit more. Yeah. It's not easy and you have um, you know, a very, very busy schedule. But I mean, how will you be able to, to rehearse? Or oh, you don't need to rehearse at all when you go with your, the, with your drummer and everything. else? The musicians else. I play with, um, if I give them a track to learn, yeah. We could actually perform it live that night without a rehearsal. And it's the same with the fiddlers and the musicians. They're all professionals. Um, okay, we usually do run through it, but if we didn't, uh, they, they've got the key. They know their exact parts, what to play. And I, I, believe it or not, I, I cut out practicing with the musicians about 20 years ago. I don't need to, yeah. Yeah. We, um, we know each other so well, and we know that, that you know, they're going to do it right. Oh, my God, amazing. Well, it's it's great when my other members are in different countries. My guitar player's in Spain, my drummer's in uh, London, <laughs> and I'm in Cyprus, so it's just as well. <laughs> <laughs> we could do a, a Skype call and practice on them, maybe. <laughs> yeah, they put up their, up their Skype, and everyone's doing their own bit on <laughs> One, two, three. What? Oh, there's a time delay. <laughs> Time and time difference in all different countries around the world, you know. <laughs> Don't wake me up now, come on, it's, it's early or late or whatever. Yeah, I know, it works, it works. Sounds well. amazing, but you are very, very busy. Are you enjoying life in North Cyprus? I do. Um, someone told me, um, I, I lived in Turkey, I love Turkey, and it's a beautiful country and great culture, and I also like Turkish folk music, I told you about that. But uh, when I came here, um, I liked the gig straight away, and uh, I got a house, and uh, it took me a while. And somebody said to me, the island grows on you. And it has now. This is home. So yeah. Definitely. I'm glad you said that. I mean, yeah, I'm yeah. glad that, you know, you feel, you feel happy. And th the thing is, as a, as a man who is busy here, you know, you haven't got time to, to dwell on anything negative. You know, you're out there, you're doing your gigs, you're relaxing yeah. when you want to relax. Yeah. And now you've got time to also travel. Yeah. And to, you know, go to uh, wherever you want to go to, really. The, the winter's here. Damn, it's just... You know, There's snow I, in other countries know, in, in Europe. You go outside and have a coffee on Christmas Day I, in Turkey. I always had a coffee outside. It's warmer here. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, this is what I love about it. I tell everyone I love the winters here. And they look at me. I said, because I'm so busy in the summer and now I can enjoy it, playing a few gigs a week, you know. But the rest mm -hmm. of the time, well, I'm always working on projects, but I can go out and enjoy myself. And yeah, life's good. 
if anyone online is watching this uh, program now, uh, anyone around the world watching, and they want to find out more about you know when you'll be doing the gigs or when you're tra where, which country you'll be in at certain times of the year, do you have a, a Facebook page or how do you how do people know where you are, what you're doing? Okay, so <laughs> first the Doctor Hook one. There'll yeah. be a page up within a week or so, probably less. Sylvia's mother, and that's it. You'll find it in uh, Facebook search and that will be like the website as well all the details of gigs mm -hmm. for that and as i say we hope to get a concert here in the island for that uh for my other music it's uh, inchaquin solo i m c h e q u i n solo or if you go to hugh o'neill uh there's a link to inchaquin solo from that and uh, on both my personal one and inchaquin solo all the tour dates everywhere i play pops up every week so so if people can follow you um they wherever do. they are, wherever you are, mm -hmm. and join in. And F Facebook is where all my business is done. It's, it's great. Thank goodness for know. Facebook. What, how did we survive without it? How did we? I don't know. <laughs> the social media. I know. The, you know, how did we ever get to know each other from <laughs> you know, before? We never had anything like that before. But like even we met through it as yeah, well. Yeah. yeah, we did it with my social media. So thanks to uh, Facebook. But so basically, all your stuff is up there online, yeah. and you'll be doing a special page for Sylvia's mother soon. Yeah. So that people can find out, oh, yeah. you know, those who will be in those countries where you'll be performing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and amazing. I mean, again, if you just said to me, I'll be, you know, singing all Dr. Hook songs on the show, I would have like, you know, no, come on, not a Hugh O'Neill, not a Hugh. But That's why, uh, if I come and do it, then you, you get the reason why. Yeah. Do you do you sing any Dr. Hook normally at any of your gigs? Never, you never revealed this side of your post. I didn't, persona. you know, but um, <laughs> funny we were talking about it today. I'm, I'm going directly. I'll be on stage in yeah. less than an hour in S and Tepe, and I've just decided I'm going to open with that. Uh, this the last song I played, The Queen of the Silver Dollar. Yeah. I'm just going to, because they don't even know it's a Dr. Hook song, so yeah. I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to open it and say, hello, how are you doing? And it starts. <laughs> so, yeah. And off we go. Yeah. And then they'll, they'll see how many yeah. guests that it's, uh, you know. You know, somebody will come up and say, oh, that's a Dr. Hook song. I said, see yeah. at the concert. <laughs> Dr. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. You've chosen for us three songs. We've heard two. And we're going to end the interview now with the uh, third and final track. You Have you deliberately chosen... Um, tracks that aren't immediately. I mean, of, we all know Sylvia's mother. The last one I wasn't quite familiar with, yeah. but um, you, you said to me that you didn't want to play the songs that immediately, yeah. like Sexy Eyes or When You're yeah. In Love With A Beautiful Woman. Uh, is there a reason for that? Well, I, I do all those in the show, obviously, because yeah. they're the big ones and everyone's singing and dancing, but some of the songs, they, they will remember them, but they, they don't immediately remember them. Like this song, a lot of people will uh, remember Marianne Faithful recorded this so some people will have forgotten this is a Dr. Hook song as well. Yeah. But originally, again, I'm not a Dr. Hook song. It's the Hook version I'm going to do, of course. And when you have, like, you know, all the popular songs, that, you know, the, the more famous ones, um, are they all up from their seats and dancing along with you? Um, well, one of the reasons we do the concerts is uh, they, they, they had a lot of beautiful love songs. Yeah. You know, uh, If Not You, uh, Sweet uh, Sixteen. Uh, and they're, they're laid back. But in a concert, you can do the lead back. You can, of course, we get them up out of the seats and jumping and dancing as yeah. well. But um, that's why I don't do bars with this show because the lows and the quiets, it has to be quiet. You know, yeah, and, yeah. and it works in theatres. Yeah. It has to be, you know, yeah. one to one, looking at me, me looking at you, you enjoying the music. And that's really what it's all about with music, appreciating good music, listening, yeah. appreciating the harmonies, the lyrics, everything about the music. And you've really demonstrated that today. I want to say thank you very much, Hugh, for coming in. Huge hand for having me. Good luck uh, for your future yeah. projects in 2018. And uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Same to yourself. Merry Christmas to Thank you very to everyone much. Here. Yeah. <laughs> and the name of the final song, you said it was made famous by Marianne Faithful. It the was, name of the song yeah. is? It's called The Ballad of Lucy Jordan. And it's another song with a story. And uh, like all the Doctor Hook songs, you can just get into the song and escape and... Well, maybe not escape into this one. This has been a little bit heavy, but it's a good song. Okay, well, we're going to say yeah. goodbye now with this last track from Hugh O'Neill, who was my guest today on A Cup of Conversation. Once again, to all our viewers out there, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy 2018, and we leave you with another wonderful rendition of another hit from Dr. Hook. Hugh O'Neill, one more time. Thank you. The morning sun touched lightly on 
the eyes of Lucy Jordan in her white suburban bedroom in her white suburban town as she lay there Need the covers, dreaming of a thousand lovers, till the world turned to orange and the room went spinning round. Yeah. At the age of 37, she realized she'd never drive through Paris in a sports car with the warm wind in her hair. Yeah. And she let that phone keep ringing as she sat there softly singing pretty nursery rhymes she memorized in her daddy's easy chair. Her husband, he was off to work. And the kids were off to school. And there were oh so many ways for her to spend her days. She could clean the house for hours. Or rearrange the flowers. Or run naked down the shady streets screaming all the way at the age of 37 she realized she'd never drive through Paris in a sports car with the warm wind in her hair yeah. and she left that phone keep ringing as she sat there softly singing pretty nursery rhymes she memorized in her daddy's easy chair the evening sun touched lightly on the eyes of Lucy Jordan on the rooftop where she climbed when all the laughter grew too loud and she bowed and curtsied to the man who reached and offered her his hand and led her down to the long white car that waited past the crowds yeah at the end to 37 she knew she'd find forever as they rode along to Paris with the warm wind in her hair 